Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. Elizabeth Salgado was a 26-year-old with a bright smile and big dreams. She moved to Provo, Utah from Mexico to learn English. But only a few weeks after her arrival, her life came to an untimely end. Elizabeth was last seen alive on April 16th of 2015, leaving her class at the Noman Global Language Center. Countless people searched all over the area for Elizabeth, but she was nowhere to be found. Then, three years later, on May 24th of 2018, a man in Hobble Creek Canyon called law enforcement officials to report he found what looked like human remains. Deputies from the Utah County Sheriff's Office went to the scene and found a skull and some clothing. The remains were taken to the medical examiner's office and positively identified as Elizabeth. Although her remains were found, investigators are still looking into who killed her and her family continues to wait for justice to be served. Let's look back at the case of a missing woman who came to the United States for education only to have her life cut short. She is the face that gives hope to the parents of missing children everywhere. Hang in there, keep, keep fighting, keep surviving. And now, Elizabeth Smart is fighting to find another Elizabeth who's gone missing in Utah. We're looking for you and we will find you. This is 26-year-old Elizabeth Salgado. The shy, devout Mormon had just moved from her home in Chiapas, Mexico, 2,400 miles away to Provo, Utah, the holy land of the Latter-day Saints. She thought that Provo, Utah was the safest place on earth and and the greatest place on earth. Elizabeth had studied to become an engineer, but her mother, Libertad, says her daughter's true calling was to learn English and spread the gospel. So the raven-haired beauty accepted a scholarship here at Noman Global Language Center. Rosenberg Salgado says his niece even got a job at a local Mexican restaurant. It was like a dream for her to be here. But Elizabeth's dream was stolen from her on this busy stretch of highway in the middle of the day. The day she disappeared, I just had this bad feeling that I had never felt before. It was the afternoon of April 16th. Elizabeth had just finished class and started the mile and a half walk back to her apartment. It was a route she never ever strayed from in the three weeks she'd been in Provo. Along the way, she texted her sister in Mexico, as she did every day, to let her know she was walking home. And then she sent a text to her other uncle, Rudenberg Salgado, who lived nearby in Orem, to ask for a ride to the store later that evening. She was not responding to any of the texts. And then I said, okay, hold on. I said, she, she's probably okay. I mean, that's what I thought, because I could never, 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 I mean, in a thousand years would think that, that, uh, that she would go missing. But she has. Now they fear something terrible has happened to Elizabeth. This particular case was concerning right from the outset because she had this pattern and personality that was well established, and then there was a complete change in behavior and pattern from the moment she disappeared. Lieutenant Brandon Post and the Provo Police Department launch a massive search for Elizabeth. There was no activity in her cell phone, there was no activity in her bank accounts, email, or even her social media accounts that she was fairly active on. A lot of very positive energy. We're going to find Elizabeth. They painstakingly search every single inch of that bustling mile and a half route. We want you out there looking uh, for any of the clothing that she was wearing or possibly, you know, if anyone finds her. Elizabeth Smart and her father Ed rally the Mormon community to find the young woman who had devoted her young life to the church. Yet they come up empty. No clues, no witnesses, and no body. All the efforts that we did, um, it, it just, like, we didn't get any results. You know, all of us working this case, the detectives on this case, patrol, myself, we're fathers. We have daughters of our own, and I cannot imagine what the family is going through in this case. So investigators start looking beyond that stretch of highway for something or someone who may know more. And then Rosenberg remembers the conversation he had with his niece shortly before she mysteriously vanished. She told me that there was a guy that wanted to become her boyfriend. She didn't want anything to do with him. And, uh, and she only said that the guy got very upset. But the young man checks out clean. Investigators even question her uncle Rudenberg. After all, he was the last person to communicate with her. I never thought it's gonna happen here, you know, never. A polygraph clears him. 
And then, this disturbing phone call to Elizabeth's sister in Mexico. This is how you're gonna find her, dead, without her head, her legs, her hands. A man claiming to have Elizabeth demands a half million dollars. Her sister somehow keeps her wits about her and hits record. I don't want to play games. You don't know how many tears we've shed for my sister. So if you have her, I want to hear her voice. Then police determined the call was a cruel hoax. The caller never had Elizabeth. It's impossible to describe what we what we feel as a family because it's terrible. You you don't you actually don't don't even know how to describe that feeling. And then Elizabeth's case goes eerily cold. We have exhausted pretty much every investigative lead that is available to us through interviews, searches, you name it. Still, Lieutenant Post travels her route every chance he gets, chasing tips and hoping for a miracle. Somebody somewhere knows something, and we need that person to call in. No matter how insignificant the information they have may seem to them, we need them to call because that may be the tidbit of information that helps us locate Elizabeth. In the eight months since Elizabeth mysteriously vanished, the crowds of volunteers have thinned. The posters have all faded, but the Salgado family still prays every single day that somehow, some way, she will come back to them. And if anybody that has my niece, just have compassion on this little girl and just let her go.